needs help but they are asking money from people even the small they have they ask from people but now i'm realizing and i'm seeing your words are true rich pastors here we have only one pastor where i took you pastor robert kayanja and another pastor he came from south africa he's called jimmy he's on the entire road those are the people who consider the poor people you know but here pastors want rich people even if they are praying a blessing they pray rich blessings to people who have given seeds you know if you don't give they don't for you but we thank god for me i thank god that i'm still alive it reads bishop one that bishop has more than five cars he has a radio station he has a tv station but he doesn't help poor people instead he just gets money from the poor people you know Well, this is the news from Jolie, um, my friend in Uganda, who helps underprivileged children and orphans. Please pray for her. Um, one of our friends managed to borrow her a phone after some documents got stolen from her, and she's such a heart to help the lost. Herself is from a Catholic background, and I've uh, been to see um, where she was from, and most of the people around there are, are suffering from AIDS and such. And when they go to these Protestant churches, um, it's just a bunch of prosperity gospel guys. And it's the same around this area as well. And um, they won't pray for you unless you pay them. Um, even I was out the other week and uh, they were asking what day you were born on. If you were day born on Monday, it was, it was $1 or whatever. And if you're born on Sunday, it was $7. To make you believe this. And people just fall for this. Because someone says, oh, they're under direction from the Lord. So are we meant to believe that Benny Hinn has repented of this prosperity gospel? Recently he said he's repented of it. After he's made his hundreds of millions um, from it. And, you know, there's some faithful servants that go out and preach the gospel. And very much in favor of street preaching and going to certain events, street pastoring, street preaching, um, two very different things. I would say that, you know, you can mix them, but, you know, just going out, winning souls is a, I believe is a, is a wonderful thing. Now, this is a Mandela effect. This picture is from the Gospel of Matthew and it's describing Jesus Christ being born in a house. Um, all those that are opposed to the Mandela effect or think it's some fragment of our imagination, that the Bible has taught that Jesus was born in a manger or a stable for thousands, 2,000 years. So you're saying that all this tradition for 2,000 years uh, is based on a lie, is based on something that um, is not even in the Bible. Think seriously about this Mandela effect, my friends. Um, the Bible itself testifies of these happenings in the last days. I do hope to get on to Photo Helix's channel very soon to get on the hot seat and just really talk about how not just the Mandela effect is affecting all of us, but uh, obviously about serving the Lord and about, um, I guess, my, my life history because all of us have got a testimony about coming to the Lord, but the Bible sort of testifies that uh, there is an elect, and and I do believe that many are chosen um, to be glorified by God. You know, just catching up with the photos, latest latest video, and I'm just looking at the comments. Really, really intelligent, um, observant people on there. But also, there's some very demonic uh, comments on there, and that's what happens when you are following Christ and you are speaking the truth. Um, Satan sends his minions in uh, so it's very very obvious I believe that um, this whole, whole Mandela effect or quantum effect is something that Satan um, wants to suppress or wants to twist more because uh, that's all Satan does that's all he knows how to do is to twist things, lie about things try to destroy things uh, rape, murder kill, destroy, steal, over and over and over. Um, 
look at the latest BBC documentary about uh, Mark Meekin, Count Dankula, again. The pedophile, pedophiles who work for the BBC making these uh, programmes probably on drugs, acid or LSD, ecstasy. I don't know what they're taking now, but, you know, it, ha it has that certain ingredient in it that makes them really psychopathic, but also um, just brings out um, their, what would you say? Oh, I don't know. That's that's the world we're living in. It's just simply a crazy, crazy world that we, that we stay in. It does not bear witness to the truth. Uh, never mind the gospel. Mention Jesus' name, mention Yeshua's name, see what happens. So, a few whys that I was thinking about from the Bible. Why the Ten Commandments? Why do some churches say you need to keep them? And why do some churches say you do not need to keep them? I would say the reason is that the, the churches that say you do not need to keep the Ten Commandments is so they can they themselves can keep control of you. So they themselves can turn you over to a depraved mind so that you're uh, just misplaced, misunderstanding the Word of God and you're relying on their sermons, on their prayers continuously every week that gives you peace but a little, that gives you a little bit of deliverance. But then again, just a few days later, you're right back filled with what seems like more demons and you're just confessing your sins to the pastor again and saying, well, I just can't seem to pray properly. I, you know, all these things are happening. There's illnesses in the family. you know, And your pastor's looking at you, not giving you the answers, not telling you to repent and tell God to write the commandments on your heart. But he's telling you, ah, read this book. You know, this assistant pastor wrote this book exactly about what you're talking about. And then you go and read that book. And that book doesn't touch on the real heart of the issue. That book probably is quoting other books that you have to buy. And you just go on and on and on. As the Word of God says, continuously learning, but never actually... Um, Knowing anything, never actually coming to a point where you understand anything. You're just always learning, learning, learning. But you're still in the same position all the time. Because you have no conviction to change your life. So that's that's a reason. Okay, Why do the commandment keeping churches want you to keep the commandments? It's because they, they have a concern for your soul. Um, now there is a law of schools different schools in Judaism and in Christianity about how you keep these Ten Commandments. Some churches argue <coughs> about the name pronunciation. I find that a waste of time. But again, they might have written books on it, that this is the better way to do it, or this is a worse way. And then again, they want to make some money from that. Or maybe they just want to appear more spiritual than the other guy who pronounces it slightly differently the name of God or the name of Jesus Christ, which has only been around for 400 years. Um, it's important to note that I am not one of the people, even though I'm wearing this T-shirt right now, that's really speaking about, you know, the Yote Vafi, behold the hand, behold the nail. Okay, that's where I'm at. But I'm not renouncing the name of Jesus by no means. I'm, I'm not from that, that train of thought or that school of thought. But what you've got to realize, the Jesus-only people really find this offensive. They really find this very, 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 very offensive. Like as if I'm just out to destroy their entire faith. You know, I'm just out to, um, you know, I'm not out to do that. What I'm saying is that uh, you've got to look back and discover, as Mel Gibson did when he was making the movie The Passion, that in the day, Jesus wasn't called Jesus. He wasn't called Jesus Christ. He was called Yeshua ben Yosef. That was his that was his name that was given to him. His first name was given to him by the angel of the Lord. The name Yeshua means deliverer, salvation. There is variance and, and root um, roots of that name. Okay. So again, a, a, a why here would be why do modern day churches um, get you to just follow the Jesus only thing? I think the reason, um, again, is for the sake of control. And you tend to find the Jesus-only churches, a lot of them are not commandment-keeping churches. So they sort of go hand in hand with, with what I mentioned earlier. Um, 
So, <laughs> we'll put that to bed. Um, I'd just like to, at this point, say, if you're finding any uh, resistance in your life, it's because you're walking in the right path. Satan will, will push against the things that God wants you to do. He will try to discredit you. He will try all kinds of tactics. He will try to mislead you. He will try to stop you from moving forward. But if you have faith in the right manner, and as it says in the Word of God, certain demons won't be moved except through prayer and fasting. Why was that verse, prayer and fasting, why was that verse removed from the NIV? Is that not obvious? It's so that the demonic demonic manifestations can gain victory and can gain foothold in Christians' lives. Again, there's a big argument, can Christians be demon-possessed? I think they can come pretty close to being demon-possessed, even if you're a true born-again Christian. Um, if you are not heeding the words of God, if, you're, if your prayer life is dead, if you're literally, if your faith life is, 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 is very low, very weak, if you haven't even read the, the full Bible, Satan can get in at some point. He's always looking for a way in to, 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 to weaken you, to mislead you. Don't be used as cannon fodder for other ministries. Or don't be, um, don't allow yourself to simply just be used for the, the sake of other people's glorification. I've, I've, in the past, I've, I've, I've kind of allowed those things, thinking, well, um, listen, I just got to see this thing through or whatever. Um, but it's, it's very destructive. We're in some very, very destructive days where narciss narcissists just seem to be ninety to the dozen They're everywhere you look, um, because of the situation in the world. You know, there's, there's, there's a lack of work. There's a lack of um, coherence in the Christian church. Um, so a lot of arguments going on, going on politically, so a lot of people just can't seem to find uh, the right group of people to grow with, you know, and to to uh, walk forward with um, in the Lord. And uh, so I just want to say, obviously, as long as we have YouTube, we can communicate small, we can try to try to pray for one another. Um, I know some of the regulars on my channel. Thank, I thank you for your prayers. I just got to say, please pray for the victims of the hurricane. Um, it's affected many states and many islands. Um, just pray for them. I think my friend Heidi was involved in that as well. She was sort of the tail end of that hurricane. Um, she's, she's looking to move somewhere. Not really sure where she is at the moment, but she's kind of looking to, to get to get somewhere so she can... Uh, she's trying to move vehicles around. Pray for Heidi. Say a prayer for her as well as Jolie there, there in Uganda. Um, if you want any prayers said, listen them below, and I, and I will get up. It will give me something to get up for in the mornings um, to to add you to my prayer list and to see the hand of God working in your life and in, and in our lives. You request me to pray. I know that you're more intelligent than that, but if you request me to pray in Jesus' name, I'll do that. Otherwise, we know that we're speaking to the, the one true God, you know, the Yote Vafi and his son, uh, Yeshua, Jesus Christ, you know. So, with these words, um, we'll say shalom for now.